Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now last week I had the Scythe Biako, an air cooler for $24. You guys probably checked that out. Uh, but this time we have the Scythe Mugen 5. This is a newer one, the Rev B. Uh, the original one got discontinued. Anyway, this one sells for about $48 and yes, it's bigger than the Biako. I don't know if it's twice the size or if you'll get twice the performance, but if you guys didn't know, it's already installed. That's because I'm recording this part after, you know, the whole video. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to be unboxing it, installing it, and giving you guys my initial impressions of the cooler. And to go with it, I also have another fan, which again, it's already installed. Uh, but I have two 120mm fans, one that comes with the actual cooler, and another one that's separate. Anyway, let's get to the unboxing. So inside of the box, you get a couple things. When you open it, there's a box. Under the box, there's a 120mm fan which looks very nice. I'll take a look at that in a moment. Under the fan and the protective film, we find the cooler, which is more massive in person than in the pictures. This is a beast. Anyway, inside of the little box, you get four fan clips to attach your fans to the cooler. You only need two per fan, so the scythe gives you an extra two, which is nice of them. Another thing that's nice of them is the screwdriver you get. The screwdriver is actually pretty sweet. It has a magnetic tip and it feels high quality. I'll definitely be keeping this for future use. And you also get a small tube of thermal paste. I prefer thermal paste like this rather than on the actual thermal paste, because if you mess something up, you have some more to reapply. If you mess up with the pre-applied thermal paste, then you have to use your own. You get a lot of good stuff here. And of course, you also get the brackets and screws. The Mugen is compatible with a load of socket types, but I'll be installing it on the 1151 platform with my Core i7-7700K. Oh, and like I said, we got another fan, so we're gonna unbox that very quickly. It's the same one that comes with the cooler. It's called Case Flex by Scythe. And what's cool about this fan is, well, besides its gray and black aesthetics, it looks really good, by the way. In the corners, you have some rubber to avoid vibrations, so that's very good. It is a 120mm fan uh, that goes up to 1200 revolutions per minute. And I could install both of them because, again, there are four clips that come with the cooler total. So let's get to the installation. Unlike the simple installation of the Biako, this one was a lot trickier. Okay, not too bad when I think of it, but I did make a lot of mistakes and I had to do some things more than once. To install it, once again on the 1151 platform, you place the back plate and align it with the four holes on the back of the motherboard. You hold it in place, then, while holding the back plate, you screw in the screws that have the plastic on one of the ends. This will go through the motherboard and connect with the back plate. Also, Make sure you screw them into the middle hole on the back plate. Do all four of these and do opposite corners to apply even pressure. After that, you get one of the brackets. There are four in total, but for the 1151 socket, you use the straight bracket. The other one is curved on the sides. Screw in the bracket on both sides using the small screws. Once that's done, you're ready to install the actual cooler. But before that, apply some toothpaste. I mean thermal paste. Be careful with the tube that comes in the box. If it doesn't want to come out, don't force it. Just apply pressure little by little because it will shoot out. Once you've applied the paste, don't forget to remove the protective film that's on the base plate. Then sit the cooler over the paste. Please note that if you're installing two fans like I am, then install the fan that will be on the back of the case first. This will be a lot harder if you install this one after. If you only have the included fan, then don't worry about this. Okay, after you sit the cooler over the CPU, you can tighten the screws on the sides. One you can see clearly on the side, but you have to tighten the other one by sticking your screwdriver in the hole above the heatsink. It's easy. Once they've been tightened, you can install the other fans and also don't forget to plug them in. It took me a long time because first I installed the cooler the wrong way, the RAM slots were covered and they're not supposed to be. Then when I uninstalled and reinstalled it, I tightened the screws and realized that installing the back fan would be impossible from here. So I uninstalled it again, installed the fan, and then reinstalled the cooler, and then installed the other fan. It's a simple process, but since it's my first time installing a beefy air cooler like this one, one, I had some trouble. Now that it's installed, I ran three basic tests, but first, here are my specifications on screen, so I won't have to say them all the time. And the temperature outside was 84 degrees Fahrenheit or 29 Celsius, and the room is about 24 degrees Celsius. On idle with nothing running in the background besides Nvidia Shadow Play to record the screen, the temperatures were about 38 degrees Celsius, which is good, but nothing impressive. However, when I ran Cinebench to stress out the CPU, the highest temperature it reached was 74 degrees Celsius. That's impressive, especially when considering that my previous $80 liquid cooler came up to 81 degrees Celsius in the same test. Anyway, the big one. When rendering a 4K video on Adobe Premiere Elements 15, which only uses the CPU, the highest temperature was 81 degrees Celsius and the average was 79. That's really impressive. The Biako, when rendering a video, not even in 4K, came up to 92 degrees Celsius. And the Deepcool Captain 240EX, 
in 4K came up to 88 degrees Celsius, and those were tested in cooler temperature. The Scythe Mugen has so far been really impressive. That's it for this unboxing slash installation of the Scythe Mugen air cooler. This thing has some potential, and from what I've seen, I would definitely recommend it. And it only costs like $48. That's crazy. I'll have a full review soon, stay tuned for that, and please leave a like, a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.